Welcome to the course Algorithmic Design. So yeah, if you remember that I showed you how to create some uh, image hybrids based on this train network called Big Gun um, that is trained on the ImageNet data. And um, I'll kind of show you how to run this code. So basically the code is there, it's in Python, it's publicly available and you can just run it and generate your own, uh, your own stuff. And many of the other kind of machine learning scripts are, um, well, at one moment, they, well, some of them are available online. And that's also good, of course, if you're a scientist, uh, if you're a researcher, you actually want to, especially in computer science, you want to give access to all of your code to other researchers, because that's also how you validate your work or because otherwise you're just claiming you did something, but if you can't really demonstrate it or somebody can not really replicate your work, it's not valid scientific research. So today uh, it's, it's basically a standard that you have to give your code um, um, you have to make your code somehow available. People have to be able to test your, um, uh, your code uh, in order to validate it. And um, yeah, that's why kind of tons of these scripts are uh, available online. Okay, so if you go, if you go online and um, just kind of trying to find, uh, yeah, this begun uh, um, collab, let me see. Okay, so uh, yeah, you have to basically just see if I have to probably run it again. Yeah, okay, so I'll just give you this link here. So that's a link to the uh, to the this um, a collab um, collab um, kind of notebook, but it could be that you cannot really run it. If you don't have a Google account, so you have to be signed in through Google, I think. So that's one thing that can go wrong. If you just click on it, um, it might not let you in if you're not signed in. So I'm signed in uh, through kind of through Google. So I can kind of run this. I'll just turn this one off. And because I already run it here, um, I hope you can screen my screen and everything. So at the very beginning, this is basically how it, uh, this is my version that I already run. And um, so it kind of opens here. And um, yeah, there's kind of a table of contents here. You can kind of remove that. And it's a notebook or it's one of these Jupyter notebooks. That means there's a combination of kind of text and code um, in the sort of same document. And it runs, it runs, so um, it runs kind of um, on Google computers. So it's not really run on your computer. It's executed or you kind of run it locally. Uh, basically, if you go here on the right, you can say, you can, I think you just say here, click and it basically connects to the, uh, to this runtime. So uh, to external resource, it says you're connected to Python free, Google compute engine backend, so GPU. So it's basically running Google's um, GPUs and not your own. You can, I think also, I think have a, like a local runtime or something like that. If you go here under edit, notebook settings, maybe you can set it here or something. Yeah, you can have none, GPU, TPU. So when you connect it, then you can also run the code and you will basically just go here in the runtime and then just say run all. And um, so I run this kind of in the break because it takes a bit of time uh, to load this. So here at just the beginning, there's some things that are hidden. Yeah, just some kind of comments. Um, and uh, this is important part. So here basically you can comment out um, which model are you using? So there's the 500, 12 times 512 big gun uh, deep generative models. So that's the high, re I mean, high resolution, that's the five, 512 uh, pixels. Um, and that's the ones that, for example, in the examples that I used um, in my work, I, I use this version here, but here I'm running a bit smaller one, just because so that I wanted to run a bit faster on during this demo. And you can of course have even a smaller one here. So if you're just doing some tests, you can run it, um, you can run kind of a bit smaller version and this is Python code or so you will just kind of comment this out and comment the other one in. And this basically loads them, loads the model. So uh, loads the model and then all of the other stuff that is here, it's kind of, you know, loading the libraries. So it's running on TensorFlow. There's tons of kind of their boilerplate here, but basically at the very end, you can just kind of um, you can sort of generate, you can create an output of the network just zoom this out a little bit. Okay, so there's the first one. Um, we can kind of explore this 
began samples of a particular category. So sometimes they call them archetypes. So here you can choose um, category. Now there's like a lot of them. So I chose already one, for example. The, um, so at the beginning, uh, there's like almost 500 of them. So there's 1000 categories. Almost 500 of them are basically animals. And there's just a lot of dogs and dog breeds all the way. Well, not, not somewhere here. Yeah, I guess until 400 or something, it's basically just animals. And then from 400, um, it's alphabetically sorted um, like artificial objects. So yeah, you can kind of read it yourself kind of, uh, let's actually find something that's maybe interesting. I know there was a dome that I generated, but let's generate, for example, church, 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 church building. Okay, so you put church building in and then you can choose um, a number of samples. I put here 10 and then there are some other parameters like uh, truncation. You can see what happens when we change these. So basically the, there's, um, there's the gun network, it generates um, sort of fake churches. And yeah, it can, let's see what happens if I put truncation to zero, what happens? So these run are actually rather fast again, because they're a bit smaller resolution and only because you have a grid, uh, you can put like a less number of samples. Okay, truncation basically means uh, I guess it's, um, you know, there's, um, this is now a generated church that has sort of, according to the network, the highest probability to be recognized as, as a church. Uh, so it's basically um, giving you the most probable uh, sample. So if you would now run, uh, run these images through another network, which is like a pattern recognition network, which is trying to recognize if there's a church on the image, this, Take exact samples here will score really high, or that's or really high to score as high as this network can kind of get it. If you ramp up the truncation a little bit up, let's see somewhere halfway, maybe 50, 3.5, uh, it will give you samples that are that quote a little bit lower on the score, or so that might not necessarily be recognized as, as churches, but it will give you a lot more uh, variation. Um, so, you know, some of these might not be recognized as churches because they just look like different buildings or something. So some of the church-like features, like maybe towers or, you know, um, a, a clock in the middle are, are kind of removed in that sense. Um, or they're just not there or kind of morphed into something else. Let's go all the way up and see actually what happens here. So here we should get uh, like a lot more variety. So we might get also weird weird samples okay yeah so here you can see uh you can still recognize them as churches but uh, there's uh you know there's kind of dark scenes and so on and so by playing with truncation you can kind of um you can get kind of a lot more variety and then you can also additionally play it with uh, noise or so uh, noise is basically just kind of um um randomizing a little bit so you will get a bit different uh, different different samples so just the ones that I showed you at the beginning, that's just one of the possible uh, samples. Okay, and let's actually, because I want to sh show this a little bit as a, um, I want to show this as a, as a sample. So let's say, um, let's say we, uh, let's say we start here. Uh, actually, let's reduce the number of samples. So everything's a bit faster, maybe we just have five. Okay, five samples, and then we start with this truncation at 0 0.5. Basically, you can just, uh, you can export these samples. I can just go right click here, save image, and uh, what did we have here? This should be a church, okay? So I have, it ready. I have a folder here, and just call it um, church, and um, here's 0 0.5, so maybe 0 0.5, I'll put it like this. Okay, and now let me just go truncation, um, just one up, or maybe 55. It's hard to go to 55. Uh, maybe let's go to six, okay. Now, of course, uh, this is Python code. I'll show you how you can kind of, in theory, automate this. I'll just save a few of these examples, dome 0 0.6. Again, you can call it however you want, but I 
So that's why I'm convenient to call it according to some parameters that I'm using. If you click on the left side here on this gray bar, double click, each or double click here, double click on the cell to view code, I guess here maybe. Okay, yeah. So if you click here, you can actually see how the code looks like. So these, um, uh, just say this again. So uh, basically there's a Python code behind, it's just kind of hidden behind these sliders. Okay, sliders are very popular these days. So um, here you can sort of see uh, what happens if you kind of start selecting things. And um, basically you can start building up on this cell here and for example, create a automatic. So, you know, the same thing that I'm doing now, kind of um, saving this manually, you can actually automate this process. So every time I'm kind of repetitively clicking here, and as you can probably uh, do a code that does exactly this, let's do one, one final one. Uh, you could kind of write a Python code, which basically gives you and saves these, um, gives you the examples and save these, saves these images. Um, save these images kind of for you and automate this a little bit if you want to do, for example, an animation. Okay, let me just do double click. Okay, now let's see the results that we got. Um, so again, these are just five or six examples. I hope you can see it. And um, yeah, so I'm just kind of running through them. Uh, last time I showed you how in Photoshop you can kind of merge this into either a GIF or uh, like a video, or you can use this, um, you know, open as image sequence, and then you can uh, do, you know, export, or like export, render video, and you can just render basically a video out of it with a certain frame rate. Of course, you maybe need to do a little bit more of these. Okay, so that's basically sampling through this uh, continuous space. We're getting kind of different versions of this uh, church. And now one other example that I want to show you. That's kind of one thing that you can do with this big gun. And then the second thing that you can do, you can interpolate between two R. So you, let's say you have two categories and same as you can kind of interpolate here within one category, you can interpolate between, um, between multiple categories. Or so here, let me just see here, I can, uh, you can set here category A, category B, and number of samples, that's kind of how many rows, maybe number of interpolations, maybe let's go just five. And um, you can also change noise for each one. So um, kind of choose basically which seed you're starting off. And then there's this truncation here as well happening. So let me actually do something similar like before. So maybe we can start with this one 0 0.5 and let's try to save, save, save these. So you're doing kind of the interpolation between uh, between samples. Right click, save image. And um, actually, what is the, this is the steel bridge arch and greenhouse. And here I can go five, five. Okay, let's do a few more, six. Oh, number six here. So Google actually has, um, um, so Google DeepMind, which is a group at Google, which is um, working with these generative models. Uh, they put, again, a lot of these um, online. So Google Colab is um, uh, this kind of online, um, not online notebooks. And again, if you ask yourself kind of why would Google sort of, um, you know, make these things available to everybody, it's because they want to set up um, they want to set up their own standard or so there's um, PyTorch, which is sort of uh, pushed by Facebook, owned by Facebook and pushed by Facebook. Uh, there's this, um, I forgot the name, some kind of abbreviation, MCTK something, which is for Microsoft and then Google has ten TensorFlow. So the, all these big companies are trying to push um, kind of machine learning libraries as sort of standards. They all do a little bit similar things and basically by making these tools available to everybody, uh, they're basically saying kind of, hey, use our tools. You can even do them for free because forget, you know, that's not how they're, how they're gonna make money. They need basically developers using their code and you know, building applications on top of their code. 
So they are more than willing to give you basically the code and even the computational resources for free. So, you know, then, then you spend time, like for example, me and you might spend time now on this Coca-Cola playing around, adapting the code. And basically once when you use the code long enough, you kind of get locked into it. Then you start teaching it to your students like me or using it in your company. And then you're using a Google product or that's the, that's the kind of an idea. Um, so that's, that's a little bit kind of the, the motivation uh, behind kind of why many of these um, tools are actually available for free. And even again, computational resources are sort of available for free because there's a kind of a power struggle <laughs> between sort of standards and big companies sort of realize that um, kind of, you know, the basically which library will be used in five or 10 years is, you know, determining kind of who, which company will sort of dominate the market in this field. And this is gonna be a very, very big kind of market or, so they all want to kind of put their foot into the door. Okay, so I think I have um, some results here. Uh, steel Arch Bridge, steel, uh, steel Arch Bridge and the Greenhouse. And here you can see again, some of these animations. So basically here what's changing is the truncation. I think it's truncation, yeah. Um, and again, we could sort of separately change the seed meaning uh you know change which images happen on, uh, appear on the left on the right and we can do these sort of animations between again this is a bit manual uh but you could in theory because it's python code you can sort of automate uh this process so you can kind of create and you can create these grids basically as big as you want they can be 10 by 10 or something like that and um you can also switch again to a um a larger model so the network that outputs um like four times the resolution. So it is 256, each of these thumbnails, but you can go to 512, so that's the highest one that is supported currently. 